very hard, they acquire skills, they practice, they, they get good at something. And once you get done with that, you don't have time to socialize. You know, and, and tell you also, the other thing is, those friendships and those relationships and that popularity that, that you get in high school is going to be over as soon as you're out of school. That whole game ends when you get out of the artificial environment where you have all these kids the same age herded into a room and then a professional sadist up in the front, you know, marching them through all these lessons, two, three, four, you know, in a group. It's just crowd control. It's not teaching. Huh? It's, it's some kind of political process, like hazing, you know? It's, uh, it's not education. So, um, you know, anybody who's in that kind of a, a crazy, insane, psychotic, actually, what's his name, calls it uh, psychotic. Gatto. Yeah, ghetto. He calls it a psychotic, schools are a psychotic environment. Uh, because they're engineered to make people stupid. They reward mean behavior and, and stupidity and crowd behavior, you know, herd behavior. And they punish intelligence and creativity and initiative. They do. I can tell you so many stories about my school. I'm sure you can all remember plenty of horror stories from your own so-called education. So. We don't need that. But all of this behavior is kutinati. It's all unwanted behavior. It's all behavior that causes anxiety, causes suffering, causes other living entities to experience pain. And because of that, it becomes an obstacle on the path of devotional service. Another kind, oh, and I meant to say that the reason that people do all this is because they're lazy and stupid. They don't think they can get the results they want by proper behavior. So they adopt tricky behavior to get the results that they're looking for. See? They don't think that, for example, you, you always, if you dig deep into somebody who is, is popular in the high school sense of popular, you'll always find a deep inferiority complex. Huh? Because they know, actually, they don't have any good qualities. So they have to make up for it by this popularity nonsense. See? Well, the people who uh, become the, the dominant role players in corporations and other organizations, religions and stuff like that, they all suffer from this same kind of deep knowledge of their own inferiority, uh, that they actually have no good qualities. The only thing that they can do to achieve success is climb to the top over the dead bodies of everybody else. And that's what they do, and they make a lifestyle of it. Of course, this is sociopathic. But, uh, oh well, you know, they, they don't consider this. They, they only consider their own benefit, and they don't consider their impact on the wider society. So this is kutinati, and we, we actively seek out and reject these kinds of people in our association. Another one is uh, matsarya, envy. Huh? Matsarya means that I can't stand to see another person's success. I can't stand to see another person advance in life. I can't tolerate somebody else's good fortune. So I have to uh, make some evil scheme to cause them pain. Envy is a very common human emotion. Uh, we see it all the time. Uh, well, look at, for example, uh, stars. Uh, there's always somebody hanging around a star who is a destructive personality and does everything possible to bring them down. Uh, now they're talking about there's a possibility that Michael Jackson was murdered, uh, that he was given drugs, and uh, well, you know that maybe the people who set up his 50 concert comeback tour 
were somehow behind it because they hired a, a doctor for him. You know, and of course, wouldn't you know, they probably have a big fat insurance policy if anything happens to Michael. So this is the world that we live in, folks. You see, you, you think you're being given an opportunity, but actually you're being set up for a fall. You know, and, and this is the way the material world works. This is how materialistic people operate. Uh, so be very cautious of this material world. It's not a friendly place. There's danger at every step. Uh, there's always some rascal who is uh, plotting and scheming to do in the uh, good people. This is our experience in life. Uh, so we see it in the newspaper, we see it on TV, and, so, and then we always think with somehow that it's not going to happen to us. Uh, but sooner or later it happens to everyone. You just have, you know, nobody is that fortunate, nobody is that, uh, is, nobody is untouchable. And the, the envy, envious people are everywhere. So they're especially drawn to organizations because in an organization, no one is responsible for anything. So they can get away with being envious and cruel and pulling mean tricks on people and never get caught or rarely get caught. And even if they are caught, they're seldom punished. Usually they get, wind up getting promoted. <laughs> Because <laughs> organizations have a tendency to reward mediocrity. Anyway, the next kind of weakness of heart is fra swa pratishta lalasa. Pratishta means name and fame, and lalasa means longing or desire. Uh, so swa means all kinds. So when a person is uh, hankering and desiring all kinds of fame, envy, you know, to be important, to be uh, uh, a key person, you know, to be like uh, the main guy or the leader or whoever in, in any given situation. Um, you know, usually we call this egotism or we call it pride or we call it being puffed up or we call it uh, you know, a person who is obsessive or compulsive about leadership or being on top. Highly competitive, type A personality. Huh? So this is a tremendous block to devotional service because in devotional service, our aim is to become a servant. It's, after all, it's devotional service. So that means if you're doing it, you're a servant. Huh? And who gets to be the spiritual master? The one who is the servant of all. See, to be spiritual master, I mean real spiritual master, not a phony spiritual master. You have to be willing to serve everybody from Krishna to the, the ants and the trees and the grass. Uh, and the better you are at serving, then the higher you are as a devotee. See, this is the truth. The spiritual master is uh, not the leader, not the, the dominator, not the controller. Uh, is simply the most experienced and most advanced servant. So whoever can serve more, whoever is better at service. And Prabhupada always said that service is love. Uh, what is love if there isn't any service? Huh? You just give a flower, I love you. Huh? It's just sentiment. It's useless. Real love means to give the most valuable service. And of course, here we go again, the most valuable service is education in the process that leads to cessation of all material miseries. In other words, spiritual life. So if someone can give training in this science of Krishna consciousness, this is the best service. That means that's the best kind of love. Uh, that's why we always sign our letters, love so-and-so. Uh, because we really want to help people. And that means giving them the knowledge by which all suffering is conquered. 
devotional service to Krishna. But someone who is busy plotting and scheming how to become the controller and how to become the number one, they don't have time to serve anybody else. Uh, they are completely egotistical and completely selfish. And that means they can't engage in devotional service. So how are they going to advance? They're going the other way, running as fast as they can the other way. Uh, so all these things, these different kinds of weakness of heart, attachment for useless things, deceitful behavior in politics, uh, envy, and a desire for fame and prestige. Uh, these are, uh, and also laziness. Laziness is a kind of weakness of heart. We discussed that last night a little bit. How contemplating a difficult task is often more